How you doing, people? Welcome back to another ESO video. Today is the full class guide for the Warden. Now, the Warden class essentially is kind of a, a nature-esque protector, kind of like a druid. You've got nature skills in both damage and heals. You've got ice skills in damage, heals, and protection. You can be very, very tanky, or you can be very, very fast. You've got teleporting type abilities and in reverse as well, where things teleport to use. You've got a lot of control. If you want to see more of this, Stay tuned, it is all coming up. Now, of course, aesthetically, the Warden is generally ice and nature, as said at the beginning, which is, I mean kind of obvious, but how do you get started in the first place? Well, just like every other class in the game, you have three major skill lines. Now, with this being the first additional class to the game outside of the base game classes, this was when they started kind of pushing more into very specifics in the class skill line. Some do cross over, but generally speaking, you have damage, you have healing, and you have protection. Now, again, some protection skills do damage, some do heals, some of these uh, do heals as well. Um, they can cross over. But generally speaking, that is how they're kind of lined up. Now, how do you level these skill lines? So what you need to do is buy one skill when you first start your character from each skill line. And slot them on your bar. Doesn't matter what they do. We can worry about that in a moment. Just have them on your bar. If you gain experience points in any way... These will progress through their own individual ranks, which will allow them to then later be morphed into another type of skill. However, while these generate or gain XP, their respective skill lines will also gain XP. As you can see at the bottom there, on the right-hand side, it says Animal Companions Level 50 with an XP bar. That starts obviously at 1, and it will go up and up and up the more experience points you gain while these are on the bar that you are currently on. If you swap bars and you don't have them on your bar when you get XP, you won't level them up. So it makes sense to always slot one of each skill line until they are maxed. Now, bear in mind also, if you have multiple skills from each skill line or a chosen skill line, that will level it faster. Each skill generates or gains even an X amount of XP and that contributes to your overall pool. Now, again, these do unlock throughout the skill line just like any other class and each one will be available at certain checkpoints once you reach them so if you are trying to get the fifth ability in the skill line you are going to have to rank it up quite considerably before you can get there but prior to that of course again same rules one from each one once they're done obviously you can take them off if you don't want to use them but it helps to get them all upgraded first of all so then you can unlock their skills and passives passives are very important and sometimes more important than the actives now how do they all work so, first of all, we're going into the Animal Companion skill line. First ability is Dive. This is a cliff racer that you fling at the enemy. But if you are more than 7 meters away, bear in mind this goes up to 28 meters, you will set the enemy off balance. Off balance is a benefit to the group. If you heavy attack a target that is off balance, you will knock them over. They will be stunned. If they can be stunned. If they're elite enemies or a boss, they can't be. But off balance still is present regardless of the enemy type. And during this period of time, if you heavy attack them, you will do 70% more damage with your heavy. You will also gain double resource. So if you're using a stamina based weapon, so a physical one, you'll get double the stamina back you would normally get. If you're using a magical based weapon, you will get double the magical back that you would normally get. Off balance lasts seven seconds, and then that target is individually immune to off balance for 15 seconds. Seven up, 15 down. So you can have a 33% uptime throughout the whole duration. Pull my controller out. Good job. We're going to keep that one in. That's a free blooper. Now, when you morph this, two very different variants. This one still costs Magicka, but it increases your weapon and spell damage after dealing damage with it, which increases when hitting off balance targets. So you'll do magic damage initially when you fling it at the target. If you are seven meters away or more, you will knock it off balance. If you're not, then you won't. And after dealing damage, you increase your weapon and spell damage by 100 for 10 seconds, 
which quadruples after damaging an off-balance enemy. So if you're just spamming this, usually you'll get 100 weapon and spell damage. If you are spamming this during off-balance, you will get a lot, lot more. Technically speaking, you can take advantage of that um, in a less spammy way. Since it has a 10 second timer on it, you could just utilize it every single um, time it's about to run out and maintain the uptime. If you do spam it, you will get damage out of it, but it is expensive. So they did change this over time to make it less of a full on spammable and more of a pay attention to what's going on. This other morph, however, is stamina. It's slightly cheaper, but instead of giving you weapon and spell damage for taking advantage of the duration and off balance opportunities, this one is damage on impact and a 10 second blade. Again, it still applies off balance if you're long range, so that's quite handy. But while this can be used as a spammable, you could just utilize it for its initial hit, leave the bleed running, cast it again in 10 seconds time. It's up to you how you fire it, but this is basically how it looks. There you go. Pigeons or budgies. Now you can spam it or you can leave it running while the bleed is there. You can see the timer above his head. And then reapply it just before it runs out. And you've constantly got that bleed damage. The damage is irrelevant on this particular character. He's not built for anything special. He literally just fell out of the tutorial with max champion points. They're not even added. He's just bare with loads of health. That is your first skill. Now, Scorch. This is tricky in comparison to most skills because it has a very awkward timer. But if you can master it, it's very, very strong. So this is cast initially and then you have to wait three seconds so hit it three two one and it pops but it will fire in the direction that you are facing when the last second ticks over it will do damage to all enemies in area of effect in a 20 meter straight line in front of you with a seven seconds uh, seven meter spread so it's quite large but it's not the highest range it's kind of mid and after it has gone boom Six seconds later, it will go boom again. So let me demonstrate that so it makes more sense. Three, two, one, pop. Then you count down from six seconds. Three, two, one, pop again. Now, I said it fires in the direction you're facing after the timer. Look at my buff timers at the bottom there. You can see that I've got three buffs at the moment. There's your timer for the countdown. If I face this way, it'll fire that direction. Doesn't matter which way I cast it, it matters which way I face. So bear in mind, that timer is important. You need to track it. So three seconds, bang. Six seconds after, bang again. Obviously, I just double pop that. Bear in mind, the second pop is the same. So there's your first one. That's going to fire in front of me. The second one's about to go. I'll aim this way. That's a tricky skill. But can be utilized very, very well in lots of different situations. And also it means you don't have to recast it. So Wall of Elements, if you place that on the ground, that faces that way, that will run throughout its full duration. This one, if the target moves after you've popped the initial one, I mean, you can chase the target and the next one will hit it. You can't fail it. You could run from one enemy to another with the same cast and not have to replace it. Now there are two morphs to this, obviously both unique to each other uh they still have the same ability as such but one has a six second duration instead of nine so it's three seconds pop three seconds pop it does poison damage it costs stamina now and it's just faster paced in general the second hit however doesn't cause additional damage because the second hit originally does the second hit here doesn't so the damage is reduced on the second pop but it's faster Three second pop, turn, three second pop, done. The other one, however, still applies exactly the same, but it has a different effect. Whereas this one is faster paced with a different damage type and different resource cost, this one has major and minor breach with it. So if this hits enemies, it will actually reduce their resistances by 5948 and 2974. So the taunt, pierce armor from the sword and board skill line that a tank would usually use to debuff a target for 9k resistances. This does it in the area of effect. So if you look at the target dummies here, you'll see above their head, they've got health bars obviously with names and no debuffs attached. Three, two, one, fire. 
minor and major breach on all targets. Then after six seconds, bang, it will go again and refresh the timer. Technically speaking, you have a really high uptime on that particular debuff, so that is quite helpful. Nine seconds initially, then nine seconds over top of it. You got a 12 second overall. I know nine and nine is 18, but you re you reapply it. Unless, of course, you're applying it to two different targets, in which case that's great also. Utilize that as much as you can, if you can, in situations that suit you. So, error of effect fights, great. Single target fights, great. But one is faster paced. The other one applies a debuff. It depends on which one you need for your build. But just remember, you can chase a target with it because the way you're facing is the way it will fire. Swarm is also an unusual skill. So this is a damage over time effect on the target, doing damage over 20 seconds. But it also applies minor vulnerabilities to the target so that you do more damage to them. So everyone else in the room can do more damage to that target by 5%. Quite straightforward to start with with a single target dot. But the two morphs completely change the skill. This one, every second cast increases the damage by 60%. And that doesn't mean 60% cast again, another 60% cast again indefinitely. It just means that every time you overlap it rather than let it run out, it will consistently have a 60% increase to the base version of it. So this is a much, much stronger on target version of the skill. Very powerful. So cast it, cast it again, leave it running. Just before it runs out, cast it again and just keep overlapping it. This one, however, stamina morph. Instead of being just a single target, it is a bleed, so a different damage source. Magic damage has a chance for status effect for overcharged, so minor magic still. Bleed has a chance for hemorrhage, which is minor mangle, which reduces their health by 10%. So different effects there. Still single target, still minor vulnerability, but nearby enemies take damage as well. And that is also in the form of bleed damage every two seconds. So... One is single target and ramps up quite aggressively. The other one is now a room killer. So it depends on how you want to build, but this is how it applies. Nice and simple. Now you can see bugs everywhere. They all take damage every two seconds. Again, the other one is only single target. That one is around the room. And again, you can apply minor um, mangle from hemorrhage if you're lucky. If you have high status chance, that can apply. Also, it sounds like loads of wasps and it's really annoying. Don't get too close to that. It'll mess your ears up. Betty Netch. Do not leave home without this. This is your tiny squid. It will give you major brutality and sorcery while it is active for free because the skill doesn't cost anything, which increases your weapon and spell damage by 20% for 22 seconds. Every five seconds, you remove a negative effect from yourself. It looks like this. There's your squid. Isn't he happy? The whole time, you have major sorcery and major brutality. And every five seconds, you remove a negative effect, which is incredibly handy. And if you do have a situation where you just get loads and loads of dots on you and they aren't getting rid of you, or you aren't getting rid of them quick enough, you can spam it. Because it's free. Passive kicked in there. We'll explain that later. Now, the two morphs are direct opposites of each other. This one... Restore magic every second. This one restores stamina every second. Basically over 25 seconds, because now the whole duration is 25 seconds, hence the five seconds every uh, negative effect is moved, or one removed every five seconds. That was back to front. This now lines up quite nice. Again, the original morph is 22 seconds. These now line up perfectly, so you can have five ticks of cleanse rather than four and confused. So... Again, it depends on your build, depends what you're uh, suffering from, stam recovery or mag recovery, but there's one for everyone. So it's up to you. That is actually bloody helpful in almost all situations for utility and recovery. Remember, it's free. Falcon Swiftness. Invoke the spirit of agility to gain major expedition for set. That was dramatic, wasn't it? Major expedition, six seconds. You're fast. And you gain immunity to snares and immobilizations. So that is your get out of jail free card, basically. You are fast as hell. Let me put that on the bar so we can see it. Flappy wings, run. You're really, really quick. 
That's a six second buff. Usually, most major expedition buffs are only about four seconds. And we're looking at bow passives, even the night blade skill for uh, twist and path, which, yes, of course, you can extend it if you stay in it for longer. But the actual activation of it is only four seconds. Most of the time, it's three or four seconds. This is huge. Anyway, don't spam it. Just use it to get out of trouble. Now, the morphs for this are both slottable bonuses, actually. Passively grants minor evasion while slotted. So while it's on your bar, you will actually take 10% less damage from all area effect types of damage. So that's quite handy. Or minor berserk. So you increase all of your damage by 5%. That can be gained from other sources, as can this. But if you don't have it in your group, pick which one suits you. Green balance. This is your Healy skill line. Fungal growth, first of all. Nice and easy. There is a heal in a conal effect. As you can see there, which is quite difficult to see. Hopefully you can see it. That's a cone heal. So the further back you are, the bigger the spread. Obviously, that's how a triangle tends to work if you're at the point of it. Basically an error of effect heal. Not for one person. For as many as fit in it. Now, the morphs. Two different ones here. Targets affected have their Magicka and Stam recovery increase. So they gain minor endurance and minor intellect for 20 seconds just by you casting this on them. So they gain the heal and two recovery bonuses that do stack with major recovery bonuses. Or the Stamina variant. Yes, you can turn it into a Stam heal. Converts into Stamina and allies near you are healed for more. So people closer within 8 meters of you have a 15% increase on that heal. So... Recovery bonus or bigger heal. Funny that the stam one's a bigger one. Might be trying to push something there. Healing seed is instead of a frontal kind of burst AoE heal, is a ground heal. So this goes on the ground like this. You place it where you want it to be. And then flowers come out and everybody's happy. So this will actually last for six seconds and after it has finished, it will heal people. As you can see, no heals. Wait for it. Heal at the end. Now, this can be used quite tactically. Anyone in the field can activate the harvest synergy, healing them for X amount of heals, depending on how you're built, over five seconds. So you've got two options. Leave it on the ground and let people heal, or they can take a synergy nice and early and then get the heal over time. But there's two different morphs to this. Corrupting pollen. Enemies in the field receive less healing and have reduced weapon and spell damage. So this is actively a debuff. People can still take a synergy and heal. But in seeds, however, the area now heals allies while it grows and it can be activated a second time to instantly trigger the delayed heal. So generally speaking, it goes on the ground for six seconds, pops at the end. This one allows for heal over time and early activation of that heal. So you can take it away. Let's activate this on the ground. There's my heal over time. Happy days. I can wait for it and get the big pop at the end. Or I can double cast it and take the heal. Put it down, take the heal. And again, you can activate it early. Just bear in mind, if you do that, you're going to have to reactivate it again to make sure the heal over time is back in the room. So how you use that is entirely up to you. Hot and pop or just a spammable emergency, very, very large range heal. Living Vines. This one I need a companion for because I can't... Actually, no, that's the wrong one. Spoiler. We'll come to that later. This one is kind of a buff. Basically, you or the lowest health ally in front of you have a buff on them for 10 seconds. And this is really, really wide range as well. 28 meters in front, 12 meters across. So you've got a large, large area of activation here. It's not like a cone. And basically, they will heal once a second when they take damage. This can only happen once a second but when they are being hit this will heal them it's not a case of a hot where it heals you over time naturally this heals when you take damage so it kind of lets you recover you're very hard to kill with this on you because it constantly gives you back for being damaged there's two different versions one applies minor life steal to attackers so basically if you hit that target you will heal much like the blood funnel um power and also heals when the effect ends. So once this is over, you get a big heal. So really, it's up to you which one you use. But one applies minor lifesteal. 
um, to attackers, and the other gives you a bigger heal. Very unusual skill, but it works very well in the right scenarios, if you can play smart with it. So just get hit. Pretty cool. Now, we are going to go over Lotus Flower next, which is activated via light and heavies. You have a buff on you for 20 seconds. It increases your crit chance in both Major Prophecy and Savagery. So that's weapon and spell crit ratings of 2629. For numbers sake, crit chance is 219 for 1%. And all you have to do is light or heavy attack. Light attacks will heal you. Heavy attacks will heal you for more. Nice and simple. But bear in mind, out of you or a target near you, the lowest health person is going to receive that heal. So you can actively heal your group by spamming light attacks. Now, Green Lotus heals two additional targets and the healing is increased. So big, big heavy attacks and it pops, you heal people around you. Lotus Bottom, however, significantly increases the duration. So this is now a one minute buff instead of 20. So much, much longer buff only for one target or multiple targets for much less time. The choice is yours, but this is quite simple. You don't really have to do anything to activate this one outside of actually just buffing yourself. It's not something that you have to have a target for. You just press it. And while this is active, you just need to do this. Watch my health on the right-hand side. In fact, you won't see the health. You'll see green numbers. Heals from lights and heals from heavies. And that is without even being built for healing. So that can get very, very strong. Really good for solo players. Just saying. Nature's Grasp. We almost spoiled this earlier. Um, we might have to spoil this enable, well, to be able to show you. So, we're not doing the ulti stuff just yet. So, spoilers, we have a bear. We're not going to talk about that right now. But I need him as my glamorous assistant. Green balance, nature's grasp. You swing to the target and heal them over 10 seconds. And you gain ultimate when this happens if you're in combat basically this is your single target heal you don't have breath of life you have air of effect or you have swing to target like tarzan now, i can't tell him to stay there so that's going to be tricky so what i'll do is i'll put him in combat so that i've got some distance on him this is how you heal someone from long range if you are in a situation where you need to get to them it's a chain that you pull yourself to them. Now, there are two morphs to this, obviously. This one, you travel faster, heal instantly, and restore more ultimate. So once every four seconds, you can get 10 ultimate out of this. And when healing an enemy under 60%, um, this is when that happens. So you want to get someone who's really, really low. Again, you can heal instantly instead of the overtime one. But if they're low, massive ulti gain. This other one, however, heals you and them. Still heal over time. You still gain ulti. There's no cooldown. But obviously, very, very different. Faster, bigger, and more ulti. Slow heal, but both of you get it. So the choice is really up to you. But the faster one, I mean, it's quite obvious that it's quicker. We'll just hit this dude here. Much faster travel. Not much in it, but the instant heal, heal does make a difference. careful in content there are some places that can be very very useful and tactically applied but there are also some places where that can be tricky and it can cause negative things so know your content first I'm not saying don't use it because you most definitely should but know your content before you start swinging around like tarzan and then accidentally georgia the jungle in it because he hits trees now Winter's Embrace. This is the only buff of its kind in the game. Outside of one set. This is Major Resolve. And everybody has Major Resolve in their toolkit as any class. This one, however, gives it to your group. So other people don't have to slot Major Resolve with you in the room as long as you're responsible enough to keep up that buff. 5948 resistances to you and everyone around you within an 8 meter radius for 20 seconds. Absolute game changer. People can slot more stuff now. Two different variants. Ice Fortress 
maintains the same radius, only eight meters, it's not massive, but at the same time, grants minor protection to you and increases the duration. So you have an additional 5% mitigation bonus and it lasts longer, it lasts 30 seconds. Expansive Frost Cloak, however, still lasts 20 seconds, still gives major resolve to the group, is cheaper and has a 36 meter radius. So this now has a huge area. Most rooms that you will encounter fights in, whether it be a boss room or an ad pool, you'll be able to get people from the other side of the room. In fact, you can apply this to people that are grayed out in your group window. It's massive. Most range in this game tends to be around 28 meters maximum. This is 36. Do not let that run out. Impaling shards. This is technically a damage skill. Ice on the ground. Stuff in here takes damage. Quite simple. Under your feet. Damage over time in the form of ice. But. This has a heightened chance to apply a chilled status effect. Chilled applies minor maim to the target, which reduces the damage that they can do. And if you apply chilled while holding an ice staff, you will apply minor brittle, increasing the crit damage that they receive. So chilled is very, very important if you're using an ice staff. If you're not using an ice staff, it's still a debuff. This will snare the enemies and do frost damage over 12 seconds. And it scales off of your maximum health. So the higher your health, the stronger this is. So while on a DPS build, you might push towards a higher resource for more damage, so higher weapon damage and spell damage, higher magicka or stamina, this requires higher health. So it makes sense to be really, really chunky. Now there's two different variants to that. Hopefully that made sense because I'm now going to go backwards on it. This version doesn't scale off of your maximum health. This one scales off of your damage stats. Now, if you are holding a destruction staff when you cast this, not if you back bar it, but when you cast it, this will actually have 30% increased damage. Doesn't matter which staff, but if you're holding one, it will do more damage. Now, this ability also has a higher chance to apply chilled status effect, just like the previous one. The other morph is exactly the same as the first one. Scales off of max health, does do a snare, does do damage again off of max health, but immobilizes the target when it is cast. So this is your pin ability. This pins them to the ground. The first version does damage off of health. The second version stays that way, but immobilizes. But this one again, offensive stats. Need to hold a Destro Staff if you want the extra bonus. If not, then don't worry. But it's placed. Instead of being under your feet, you place it. There's your air of effect, damage over time, frost skill. Remember, one for health, one for offensive. Arctic Wind might be possibly one of the most broken skills in the game in a good way. Instantly heals you and gives you a heal over time for 10 seconds. Scales off your max health. The more health you have, the stronger this is. Looks like this. Nice and easy. Two different morphs. Polar Wind increases the heal over time and increases the heal potential as far as targets are concerned because it's not just for you anymore. It's for you and one more person. This also scales off of your maximum health. So if you're a tank and you're utilizing this for your own self heal, you will heal someone in the room as well. So that is really, really helpful. Now, the other morph of this, a little different. No more big heal. It's still big, but not as big as this one. The initial heal is based off of your offensive stats rather than your health. So while you can utilize this as a tank, it's less effective based on your health and more effective based on your offensive stats. So you might have to consider that. If you want to utilize this on a tank, you need some offensive stats as well. It doesn't have the heal over time anymore either. What it does is for 20 seconds now, you will do frost damage and error of effect. This allows an area of effect stun for three seconds and the damage has a higher chance to apply chill status effects. 
So inside the other ability that also applies chilled, this contributes to a heightened chance. You basically have a lot of control here. Bear in mind, again, this stun does last three seconds. It, it is a little tricky because it used to apply straight away, but now it doesn't. It applies after two seconds. So you can avoid it. But the heal depends on your stats. I know I'm overemphasizing this, but people don't necessarily read this stuff. This one scales off of health. This one scales off of damage. Weapon or spell damage, magical or stamina. I do utilize this on the Nature's Bounty build. That is actually on the channel if you want to look it up. If not, it's in the description below. And uh, while this has a lesser heal than this, it is actually very effective for control. So it's a very tough choice when it comes to tanks as to which one you might want to pick. Endless Archive, Polar Wind probably could be really useful. But then the stun from Arctic Blast is as well. So the trade-off is there. It's really difficult. Anyway, the choice is yours. The wind, by the way, does look pretty cool. Let's show you what the stun looks like. You can't stun these, but you'll constantly do damage every two seconds. And with loads of health, you can still get a fairly decent heal out of it. So again, the choice is yours depending on how you want to build. Crystallized Shield. This is actually really bloody strong shields um kind of circulate around your body you have three of them and they can absorb a total of three projectiles with the combined amount of that damage shield each time you absorb a projectile you get two ulti looks like this you can get shot three times the two ways for those shields to disappear outside of the timer running out is if you take all the damage in one hit, obviously your damage shield's gone, or if you take three hits that are equivalent to or under the amount of the damage shield's strength or size. Two morphs. This one massively increases the shield's strength, absorbing projectiles, but also fires back ice, which stuns enemies. You don't get ulti back from this anymore, though. So you fire back frost damage. That is quite handy. Really, really nasty for people that are trying to get you from long range. This one, however, absorbs the projectiles and doesn't fire them back. But you do get major heroism and it reduces the cost. So each time you absorb projectile, you do get two ultimate, but you gain major heroism for six seconds, giving you three ulti every 1.5 seconds. So this is your ultimate regeneration version. And this is your much, much stronger and retaliate version. Again, how you build is totally up to you. Frozen Gate. Two very different variants of this skill. This summons a portal on the ground, which arms after a second and a half and lasts 15 seconds. Yes, you can pre-plan where to put these. When triggered, the enemy is teleported to you, immobilized where it lands, and frost damage is dealt to it. You can have three at a time. So, some classes have a pull ability, while well, the DK does. Other classes have to utilize Silver Leash to pull enemies in. The Warden has portals. You can have three up at a time. If anything stands in this, it teleports instantly to you. And it's stuck. Frozen Device. Teleported enemies have their damage done reduced. So while they come in, while they're immobilized, while they take frost damage, they also have major maim. Chilled applies minor maim. This applies major. Yes, they stack. They can't hit very hard. The other one, however, does still bring in the enemy. It does still apply the damage. It does still apply the immobilization. But it doesn't apply major main. Instead, one of your allies can run into the area and take the synergy and teleport to you. When they do, they get a run speed bonus for eight seconds. So you can utilize this tactically in two ways. One, pull enemies in. Or two, your group can get to you quicker. That is very, very handy if you want to give them a mobility bonus or if they just need to get out of trouble really, really quick and shoot across the room. So that's basically a teleport for the group. Very handy indeed. Now, I'm going to go over the ultimates. I know you've seen the bear already. Yes, there's a bear. Look at him. Aw, oh, yes. That's Yogi, by the way, and he's MAGA. 75 ultimate. So bear in mind, this is a pet, so it does need to be double barred. Because if I swap bars now, he's dead. Aw. Oh. We're going to put him on both bars. Otherwise, that's going to get awkward. So he does damage, magic damage to start with, and swipes the enemy constantly while he's in combat. 
and they can stun and they can also hit really hard if you activate the ultimate. The lower the health of the target, the more damage they do. With it being only 75 ultimate, you can borderline use this every second rotation, depending on how your build is set up, but you can use it a lot. If you've got major heroism all the time, especially if you're using shields, you can use this a lot. You get the idea. Two morphs. This one um, still does magic damage. It does actually increase the amount of bonus damage at low health, though. So this execute power is much, much higher. You want to be activating this ultimate all the time to do the extra swing, but this one does hit in excess of 150% extra damage at low health. That can get dramatic. I mean, we're talking over 200k a hit here, depending on how you build. It's very, very strong. The other morph, however, doesn't do magic damage anymore. It does bleed damage and has quadruple the chance of applying status effect versus any other damage of its type. So, hemorrhage, again, is a status effect of bleed damage and can apply minor mangle, reducing the health of the target by 10%. So, the chance to apply that is incredibly high. The execute, however, is back to normal. So if you want constant hemorrhage or constant bleed damage, that version, if you want the higher execute, take this version. The choice is yours, depends on how you want to build, but they are quite different. This one might do more consistent damage and that one might do more execute. Well, it will, but along the way they might end up meeting in the middle somewhere but it's a preference depends on how you're built depends if you want to take advantage of that stuff oh you want to see the bear obviously activate him so he's there all the time if he dies obviously you got to reactivate him it doesn't cost you anything to do that but if you wanted to use a special looks like this big slap looks not that dramatic believe me in content that really really hurts and also in PvP, you don't want to be caught by one of those. Get out of the way. Green Balance, Secluded Grove. This is your healing ultimate. Now, first of all, this creates a forest area and it heals people initially um, and then heals them over time. So it's quite straightforward. Big heal in area of effect. This one, however, if you heal people that are low health, so under 50%, you will get 20, 20 ultimate back per target. The cost is only 90. You can build ultimate very, very quick as a warden. This can be almost spammed in some situations. It's really strong. This version, however, the healing over time will continue to heal you and your allies after leaving the area. So you get an initial heal plus a six second heal over time. And then after you leave or when it's finished, you still get a further four seconds worth of healing. That one, probably more useful in really tight situations because you can spam it if you get low health people. This one, just for the sake of its duration, is actually really, really good. We're going to show you this one regardless because it doesn't really matter which one we pick. They look relatively similar. We've got trees. Inside here, you get the heal. If you leave, you still get the heal for a further four seconds. So once it's over, that effect will stay on you. So technically, you get a 10 second heal instead of six. Winter's Embrace. Now, these two are very similar. You basically call down an ice storm, as you would expect. You're a warden. Um, two different ones. This does frost damage in area of effect for eight seconds and reduces the movement speed of targets. So they're snared. And also, you've got the major protection bonus. So anyone inside of this, your allies, will have 10% damage mitigation. The two different morphs. This one increases your weapon and spell damage after activating. So you activate it and you get an extra 300 weapon and spell damage for 30 seconds. And you still get the major protection as well for you and your group. So it's a protective spell, but you do benefit from an increased damage stat. This version, however, is more focused on protection and buffing the group. Short duration weapon and spell damage increase longer duration and applies applies guaranteed a chilled status effect to enemies hit at the expense of damage done so this now does less damage lasts longer has a stronger snare 
and guarantees chilled status. So everything is minor maimed. If you're holding an ice staff, that's guaranteed brittle in error of effect. So this one, more damage stats for you. This one, much more control. We get some ulti so I can show you what it looks like. Wrong ulti. Rip. Should we cut that out or leave it in there? No, we leave it. Damage over time. Chilled on absolutely everything constantly for every single tick. That is 12 second ups time in air of effect minor maim or minor brittle. Bear in mind, by the way, that lasts four seconds. So technically it's not a 12 second up time. It is 16. That is a really powerful ultimate. Protection and buffing and debuffing. Okay, now we're going to go into passive. So animal companions is quite simple. Very front loaded passives here. Anytime an animal companion skill ends, you are healed. So you may have seen this earlier, but when I was using the blue Betty, I was spamming it. I was healing. That is because when you recast it, the old one ended. When an ability ends, you heal. Much like the pigeons as well and the shalks, whenever they end, you heal. There's a heal. There's another heal. Every time that terminates, you heal. Pretty bonkers. When you cast an animal companion's ability while you're in combat, you get four ultimate. This can happen once every eight seconds. That's quite fast paced, actually. That's half an ulti a second, which is really handy if you stack it with loads of other bonuses, especially if you're using your shields, etc. You get it. Easy peasy. Increases your magicka and stamina recovery by 12% if an animal companion ability is slotted. If you just have the bear, that's done. Or any of these abilities. As long as you're on that bar, you're good. Increases your critical damage by 4% for each one of these skills slotted, including your ulti. So this has changed over time, but we finally kind of settled on this. You have higher crit damage. Yes, you can fill the whole bar with it. Yes, you can benefit from each one. That does get a little nuts because it's 4% for each one, but the choice is yours. It depends on how you want to build. Green balance, your healing skill line. When you heal yourself or an ally under 40% health with a green balance ability, you gain major mending, increasing all of the healing that you do by 16% for four seconds. So usually you get that from a heavy attack on a resto staff. The warden literally just has to heal low health targets. So that includes you. This heal here. Remember the other one gives you ulti back if they're low health. You also get major mending, making the heal stronger. When you heal an ally with a green balance ability, you gain 250 magicka or 250 stamina, whichever resource pool is lower. This effect can happen once every one second. So that considers your lowest pool and you basically just regenerate it. So that's really, really bloody helpful. Make sure you get that as soon as you can. Increases your healing done with green balance abilities by 2% for each one slotted. That can go to a maximum of 12% if you have the ulti and all skills slotted. It's up to you how you build, but that will give you a benefit for each one. Bear in mind, if you swap bars, that bonus no longer applies if you don't have them present. When you activate a heal on yourself, this is the big one. This is the class bonus that everyone gets. Everyone has one bonus. Necromancer has major vulnerability that other classes can't bring. Granted, that's in sets now, but that's how they came out of the box. Other classes have minor buffs that can help the group in forms of crit bonuses, evasion, damage bonuses, the Warden brings health. If you heal yourself or anyone else in the room, and that means activate a heal. That doesn't mean they have to have 99% health or lower and receive a heal. You just have to put one on them. They will gain 10% maximum health. Easiest way for us to do that is actually to just cast a pet. Done. We healed. Minor toughness. 20 second uptime on that. Well, watch that keep refreshing. Bottom of the buff timers, the one on the end. That was hard, wasn't it? Loads of health. And for your group, all you need to do is keep up an active heal once every 20 seconds. That can come in many sources. Even Blood Funnel will do that from the Undaunted skill line. If you have this down on the ground, and people take minor lifesteal, and they heal from it, that will keep their health up. 
Not saying that's what you have to do, but some food for thought. Winter's Embrace passives increases your chance of applying chilled to enemies with Winter's Embrace abilities. Remember, this has a heightened chance of status effects. So does this if you take the other morph and this one, actually, depending on how your stats are. Um, you apply chilled if you apply this anyway. There's lots and lots of ways to push that status. But for the Warden, the more you do it, the better. Because this increases the damage of your chilled status effects by 562. And this scales off of your offensive stats. So if you're built to be a DPS and you have a crap ton of chilled, you're constantly firing off status effects to increase your DPS. And debuff the targets. Frozen armor is really, really good. If you want to be nice and tanky or just have some resistance bonuses, for each Winter's Embrace ability slotted, you get nearly a thousand resistances. 990. That's actually really, really helpful. Also counts for your ultimate as well. Reduces the effectiveness of snares applied to you. You have so much control, but you've also got mobility. Snares that you apply are very, very strong. Snares that apply to you are not very strong. And increases your damage done by 2%. Read this very carefully. All of the damage that you do, no matter what source it comes from, is increased by 2% because you're a warden. That's it. But if you choose to use an ice staff, you won't benefit from the passives of the other staves. So you won't get the 12% increase to damage over time from the flame staff. You won't get the status damage over time bonus or, or status bonus from the flame staff, which you might want because chilled. You can get chilled from your skills. Maybe you'd want to enhance that. You can't get the channel or direct damage bonus from the lightning staff if you're not using it, which is 12%. So the ice staff doesn't come with any DPS benefits. It comes with protective benefits. But for the warden, just for holding an ice staff, all of your damage is increased by 12%. That's a trade-off and that's a choice. But if you do hold an ice staff, everything you do is stronger. Not specific damage. All of it. So, how you build is up to you. Now, we are going to go over some class identity kind of sets. I mean the ones that are aesthetically pleasing to the Warden. The ones that feel like they belong to the class. Even though they don't. Although one of them does. Because now, we have class sets. We don't have many. But we do have class sets. I have to show this, otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Healing done, magical recovery, weapon and spell damage. Gain Herald of Spring, causing your green balance over heals. So if you heal someone over 100% health, you apply minor heroism. Now, casting a healing ability while bracing consumes the spring. So while you're blocking, basically. And gives you instead... Harbinger of the Fall for six seconds, causing your green balance overheals to create an eight meter area of effect for five seconds, applying major cowardice to enemies and minor vitality to allies. So major cowardice reduces their weapon and spell damage by 430, if my brain remembers that correctly. So everything around you is debuffed. That is a really funky set. But it can be used in certain situations very, very sneaky. You can create an area once every five seconds, so it actually overdoes the cooldown. So that works. Weird, but it works. You need green balance skills to use it, otherwise, you won't benefit from it. But that is a very specific set. Now, what else have we got? You know, we're going to be looking at our stuff, obviously. So, basic dungeons. You, you, you're not going to miss this one, I'm afraid. It's going to happen. Except I can't find it. Dire Frost, Ice Heart, quite simple, monster set. Go into Dire Frost, do it on Vet, get the helmet, do some pledges, buy the shoulder from the pledge merchants, if you're lucky. I mean, the boxes are random, but you can get it. This, if you deal critical damage, you have a 20% chance to gain a damage shield. And during that time, while it persists, you will constantly do damage with Ice in area of effect, and it scales off of your highest offensive stats, weapon or spell damage. This is actually a very strong protective set that can be boosted by stats and champion points and all other manner of buffs and bonuses. 
but basically damage shield for hitting and doing damage for close range while it's running. Really, really nice. Then you've got Ice Furnace. When you deal frost damage, you deal an additional flame damage in area of effect within eight meters around the initial target. And this can happen once a second and scales off of your highest weapon and spell damage. So basically, if you were to do, let's just say for argument's sake, crush and shock. So light attack hit, light attack hit, light attack hit. Every single time you hit, you will do flame damage in area of effect as well as the initial hit from your skill. So the target is basically bursting with flames every time you hit them. That is quite nuts. We've got, we're going to go to Maelstrom here. Maelstrom Arena. Easy peasy this one. Winterborn. Obviously this is very Warden-esque. When you deal frost damage, you summon an ice pillar out of the ground, which pops and does damage in a three meter radius. And this will also reduce the movement speed of the enemies. Again, scaling off a weapon is spell damage. Quite fun. Icy stuff, what's not to like? There are some overland um, bonuses as well that give you just increase flat out to damage abilities with ice. Frostbite, which is from Blackwood. This is quite simple. You've got some nice damage bonuses there, but increases your damage done with frost abilities by 8%. So all ice is 8% higher regardless of the class, but obviously Warden's got loads. And it also increases your damage against Chill's targets by 4%. And increases your damage done against enemies afflicted with Minor Brittle by 2%. So using Frost while chilled with Brittle will give you all three of those bonuses. Not really much else to say about that. DLC Dungeons. Obviously, we've got a cool set here in Frost Vault. Icy Conjurer. Applying a Minor Debuff. Chilled. Which is Minor Mame. Summons a non-reflectable ice wraith that does damage to the enemy, dealing frost damage over time. That is very, very impactful, but you have to apply debuffs. Now we've got... Oh, where have you gone? Depths of Malatar, I think? Probably got this wrong. Nope, I've got it. Frozen Watcher. This was on the Nature's Bounty build a long time ago. Basically, while you hold block, you have an ice whirlwind around you. And enemies close by will take damage every one second. And this scales off of your maximum health. So the higher the health, the stronger the damage. But your Blizzard also has a 15% chance to apply chilled to damaged enemies. So if you are a tank and you're utilizing all these ice skills to apply chilled and you've got this, you can basically guarantee it. It's pretty damn strong. And then we've got some Healy stuff. This isn't necessarily just for the Warden, but I do use it on one of the Warden healers on my channel, and it is really, really helpful. This is in Scale Caller Peak, depending on how you want to build, of course. Yorval's Guidance. You have the ability to cast lots and lots of buffs in a very short period of time. You've got the Fungal Heal, which gives minor recovery bonuses. You've got minor toughness. You can apply minor uh, mending and, and all that kind of stuff. You've got major mending for yourself as well. And all of these timers running at the same time. This here allows major and minor buffs to have an increased duration, as well as damage shields. So your buffs you give to the group, including that resistance buff, has an extended duration. This can be very, very helpful alongside all the things the Warden is throwing out. Now, while that's not necessarily a full-on healing set as far as the five-piece bonus is concerned, that does improve all the buff-up times, and you do have a healing done bonus on the fourth piece. It's pretty useful. There's so many things in the game that we could go over as far as what you could and couldn't use for each class. There's over 600 sets in the game. You're not really restricted apart from the class skill um, sets, which are very, very new. So go nuts. If in doubt, try it out. But hopefully that was some insight as to what you could do with some of the more ice-based or warden aesthetic looking sets. So hopefully that helped people. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to I don't know, put together a warden for yourself. And if not, there are builds on the channel. Very much ice and nature. And rightly so, there's some builds called that. There's nature's bounty on the top left. There is the hist keeper on the top right. There is the polar express on the bottom left. And if you want to go into endless archive and understand all the bosses and stuff, there's the endless archive guide at the bottom right hand side of the screen. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.